Well, last week we took down Florida Atlantic University in a very, very tight battle. This week we take on FIU at FIU to try to keep our conference championship hopes alive. Can we stay undefeated? Find out today. So welcome back everyone to another episode of the journey of Tim Dunge. Uh, hopefully in this episode we're a little bit more capable of taking care of the ball. We'll have to see. That's going to be something that's going to be very important here. Just because we really need to be responsible with the passes I'm throwing and uh, keeping the ball in good protection while we're running. But that's a good return by Trenigan to get us set up to start. I, I feel like I'm a broken record at this point in just trying to get us to play what our identity seems to be. Uh, so we're going to see if we can get Brian Blair started up early. And he takes it for a 13-yard rush to get us started. Seems like Brian Blair might have a field day today, but let, let's see. Okay, let's see if we can open up the offense a little bit. Uh, we're not going to fall too much in love with that Curtis go route, but let, let's see if they defend it well. They did, but we got big air tank haul in. Valuable part of our offense. hit Curtis on the outside and he puts on a couple of moves and scores touchdown Sean Curtis and touchdown Blazers we take the lead on the opening possession with a couple of moves that just put a bunch of people on their butts all right let's see if our defense can uh, pull off some of the same moves it's been doing and uh, follow our offense and being a little bit high powered who am I covering? Back? Okay. And they complete the 50 yard pass. Our safety should have gotten there to sack the quarterback, but not a good start. fall back with the run up the middle but we were ready for it third and one on the four and we stop them for the fourth and one now, I would fully expect them to go for it here, though. And they're running five wide, or four wide with the halfback. So, we need to kind of match. Let's see if we can get the goal line stop. And our answer is no. Touchdown FIU, and it's now a tie game. And Gonzalez tucks it and runs again, this time for a 23-yard gain. They just don't seem to value him as a running threat. You know what? We'll do it. We'll run my ill-advised play that always happens. But let's see if we can catch him on. Brian Blair turns up field, and we complete a screen for a first down. It never happens! It's twice now we've gotten into the uh, red zone and have flundered. Uh, I don't think we've got a 41 yard field goal kicker. Uh, if we punted and got the touchback, it wouldn't, it'd be a four yard difference. So we're going to see if our kicker is good enough to make it. 
And he did! Just barely get a field goal out of this possession. Ryan King, get there. No, and he... What were you doing, man? We muff a punt. Get, they get the ball on our 42. So our defense has to make up for our mistakes here. Let's see if they can control it as we uh, start the second quarter. That's a no. Man, that man is starting to run all over us. Might be falling for the trap here and doing the blitz, but... There we go. We slowed him down. And they run it again. That is five draw plays in a row. You think they would learn that uh, after a no yard gain and a one yard loss that maybe it's not working. And there we go. We shut down that screen early. Read that one for once. We'll see if we can block their field goal. And they make the field goal to tie the game up. Oh, we throw the deep ball. We hit Ryan King on the deep ball. He could go all the way. Touchdown, Blazers. The 74-yard pass from Maurice Gonzalez to Ryan King. That's the way to improvise. We almost missed the tackle. Now it's fourth and inches. They'll probably punt it away. What a stop by our defense. Now we can see if we can tack on some extra points. Oh, and we lost Gonzalez for three weeks. That's going to hurt. Well, the good thing is we know what Matt Goolsby is capable of. And we get the sack to get the ball back to our offense. But we'll have to tighten down what we do in order to make sure we can keep moving the ball. So we got Matt Goolsby in to take over the uh, quarterback duties. He's fully capable as our backup, so we should be able to utilize him. But let's go back to pounding the rock with Brian Blair. We're going to have to get Matt uh, moving a bit in the uh, passing game, so let's try to slow things down a bit and run some uh, more short and intermediate routes looks like they're gonna be blitzing into it so that should be fine hit fry on the outside he takes the cut and he takes it for four or for a lot more we get inside the red zone off of that short pitch and catch for a 40 yard gain Going to keep an eye out here to the right side of the field. Uh, going to hit the bailout route with Eric Hall. And he makes a defender miss, but it's not enough to break free. First and goal. That makes it first and goal. Now let's see if we can hit something kind of similar. And free up some uh, empty space underneath.
Goolsby tries to shake him and is unable. Now it's going to be second and long in goal. It's going to limit our options a bit on what we can do. Um, and so we need to get the ball out of the field, or out of the backfield just a tad faster. Oh, and got a little happy feet there, third and goal. Field goal here is not a bad option, but we would definitely like to get our touchdown. So let's do something that's going to get the ball out of the uh, backfield a little faster, because I imagine we'll see a bit of blitz pressure here. And it's not enough. Only a three-yard gain on that. It's going to be fourth and goal, and we're going to take our field goal to go up two possessions. Nothing but net. We go up 20 to 10 late in the second quarter. All right, they're probably going to throw one prayer up to the end zone here. Let's see if we can uh, defend it well. And there it is. And we pick it off. I had no idea who got it, but <laughs> Taylor, number 14. And unfortunately, we have to give the ball right back to them. But at halftime, we're up 20 to 10. Let's see if we can hold on in this second half and uh, cruise to a victory. Probably going to do ill-advised and uh, apply a lot of pressure up the middle. And we stop it! Fourth and two! Great way for our defense to bow up and shut that down. Not as successful on that down. Third and three. Now let's see if we can get the stop here. If we keep playing field position like this, I feel like we we will be successful. But that all just comes down to whether we can uh, keep doing it or not. We sell out for the run, and we pick it off! Wasn't a user pick by any means, but still a pick nevertheless. Pollard on the outside undercuts the route. Big Eric Hall for the first down. Gets us four more uh, downs to do something here. Brian Blair with the huge run to make it first and goal at the one and a half. Let's see if we can punch it in. This is definitely going to be four down territory here, even up 10. But we got touchdown machine Jared White, but he stopped. We'll give it right back to him. Might have to make one guy miss on the outside, but let's see if we can do it. Whoa, it's like I hit a wall there. He just stopped. Third and goal. I know some of you may be saying I need to pass the ball here, but I, I have faith in our running game and our offensive line to punch this one in. With Mr. Touchdown Jared White, that's exactly what we do. Touchdown UAB to go up 17 points late in the third quarter. This should be enough to hold on, but we will see. Second down. Let's see if we can hit Fry on the underneath. Watch 
No, we'll hit Lonnie Scales, and they were ready for that. Third and seven. Being on our or being on their 30, we're probably just outside of field goal range. Gonna tempt fate once more and run our favorite screen pass. Maybe throwing it to Jared White would be a little bit more successful though. We'll have to see. Oh, and he gets stood up right before the first down marker. We're gonna end up taking that to quarter and we'll have to decide whether we wanna kick the ball or not. 24 yards, I think we can make it. And we need to do it quickly because we have the wind with us. So we're actually gonna kick before the quarter. Oh, we just miss it off the crossbar. If I had a bit more time, probably should have called a timeout, but uh, just missed the field goal there. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter. We're up 27 to 10. It should be enough to hold on, but stay tuned to see if we can uh, continue our offensive performance. Oh, I guess he passed it and got blocked by the defender putting him on his butt. Didn't get to catch who it was, but still, it's third down. Let's see if we see a screen pass here. No. And they go for the deep ball. And we bat it down for fourth down. We're starting to force them into only throwing the ball against us, and that's starting to work in our favor. We're going to run our option off on the uh, weak side, so we're going to see if we can get Matt Goolsby up and moving. And he throws down a defender to get the first down, and another, and tumbles his way for a seven-yard game. That's going to help us take another couple of minutes off the clock. Going to run our triple option with Jared White and Lonnie Scales, and we'll, we'll see uh, if that takes us to success. Don't break it for a touchdown, but we get the first down, which allows us to take even more time off the clock. This drive is just burning time off. Cutting out any chances for them to complete the comeback. And Mr. Touchdown Jared White trying to power himself to the end zone. Doing uh, spin after spin all the way down to the three yard line. So now we're going to see, we're going to do kind of a modified triple option. And they don't bite on it. Bologna Scales gets stuffed by the defensive line. We're going to stay in the option realm. I enjoy running the option a lot, so I, I don't mind it in the slightest. Then also, if we get stuffed, we get to take even more time off the clock. And Matt Goolsby runs it in to put the exclamation point on this and finish it off. We go up 34 to 10 in the final two minutes of the game. That's going to do it. So we lose, lose Maurice Gonzalez for three weeks, but Matt Goolsby says, you know what guys, I got this. I'm gonna play very conservatively here for the last minute and a half, because they're just gonna be looking to drive the ball down in a there we go, we get the sack! Who was it this time? Mr. Payne! He brings the pain down on Cantrell! Let's just take this home. No need to do anything tricky. Uh, we'll see if they call the timeouts on the kneel. If not, this will be ball game.
And they don't, so one kneel away, and we will be over. We'll go 2-0 in, in conference. And with ECU falling, we may be undefeated. Or, we will be undefeated. We may be first overall in the conference, which would be huge for us. There we have it. Tim Dunge's UAB Blazers are 5-1 overall, 2-0 in, in conference USA play. Setting us up really well for what's ahead about halfway through the season and we are looking like we're starting to reach top form let's check our overall stats for the game and see how better how much better we played 21 first downs to their five that was huge in 372 yards of total offense we had more than double them in total yards which was really nice 158 yards on the ground, which is great. 15 for 21 completions. We were much smarter with the ball, which made things a lot easier to play with. 214 passing yards is acceptable. 40% uh, fourth or third down conversions. We'd like that number to be a lot higher. Didn't attempt any fourth down or two points. 83% uh, in the red zone. We struggled early on, but we seemed to start to find a groove. Uh, one fumble lost, eh, it was a muffed punt, but for the most part, we were really smart with the ball, and that made a huge difference versus the two times we intercepted them. And then eight, or 487 total yards, which was pretty good, and we dominated them time of possession. So, when you bring all of that together, you get a really, su really successful game, and that's how you win a second conference game. Well... After UC ECU goes down, we take overall lead of the conference division based off of our win percentage. Looks like we've got a little bit of competition here with uh, Marshall and ECU, so ECU's loss was not to a conference team. Uh, and then we also, we play UTEP eventually, I believe, but UTEP and Tulsa are also undefeated in conference, and UTEP is undefeated overall. So we do have a bit of competition here. but. Looks for the most part that we are sitting well in the division and positioning ourselves to make a run at a potential conference championship. Join us back here next week where we take on UTSA. Looks like they're not the strongest overall team, but we can't let our guard down in this conference. You've seen with our first two games. These teams will exploit if you have some issues. But, I'd like to thank you all for watching, hope to see you guys back here next week. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe because it helps me out so much more than you know. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!